Hey, what's up? It's M squared. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I use the VMPC 2000 XL plugin. Okay, so I'm using Logic Pro X as my DAW. To load this plugin, all you have to do is go to the instrument insert here, click on that, go to AU Instruments, then go to Ismar, and then go to VMPC 2000 XL stereo. Okay, once the plugin opens up, all you have to do is click on the plugin and we'll get rid of that text box that you see in the center. So this is the VMPC 2000 XL plugin. I'm using version 0.6.4. Now, if you're an MPC user, you're gonna love this plugin, especially if you come from using the MPC 2000 XL like I do. I've been using the real MPC 2000 XL machine since about 2002, and I absolutely love it. I actually did a full length video of a walkthrough on how I like to use the real MPC 2000 XL. I'll put a link card up here if you want to check out that full length video. Okay, so if you'd like to resize the window of the plugin, all you have to do is go to the bottom right hand corner, click and drag out the size of the window to your liking. And as you can see, this looks identical to a real MPC 2000 XL, which is amazing to me. So this VMPC 2000 XL comes as a standalone version as well, but I only use the plug-in version. So that's what I'm going to be showing you here as I walk through this. This is great if you're on the road, if you're traveling and you want that MPC feel or look or vibe, this is a perfect plug-in for you. And if you've never used an MPC but want to see what the process is like, this is also a great plug-in for you to check out. Okay, so we're going to start at this top right hand corner of the plugin. You're going to see four icons here. This computer keyboard icon is basically your configure computer keyboard map. It shows you a layout if you're only using a computer keyboard to be able to trigger all of the different functions and pads here on the MPC 2000 XL plugin. Next is the question mark icon. This is your browse online documentation. You click that and then you'll see this window pop up with all of the documentation and all of the different chapters and links to see how to install this properly and all of the uh, introduction notes around the plugin. So definitely check that out. Next, this is the resize or reset window size. So if you did extend your window like I did, all you have to do to bring it back to the default size is click on this and it will shrink it back. As you can see, there seems to be a slight bug when you do that here. So um, just drag from that bottom right hand corner to resize the window and it will pop back in uh, to fit the entire frame of the screen. Next, you have this cog icon. This is for your audio MIDI settings, which they won't have engaged if you use this only as a plugin, but if you're using the standalone version, they will offer some options for this icon here. Next, if you look at the actual screen for the MPC plugin, if you have a hard time reading the screen as it is in the plugin, just double click and it will pop out of the plugin and you'll have your own screen here outside of the plugin. You can actually resize this screen as well. And next you'll have your function keys here, just like the real MPC 2000 XL. It's really incredible how realistic they've made this plugin to the actual MPC 2000 XL. So all you have to do is click and you'll see the same option windows pop up. Main screen is here. You can click on that. Everything checks out to be exactly like the MPC. If you want to solo something, it's there. As you can see, it's flashing. As you can see, this uh, sequence one is highlighted. I can hit open window and the open window sequence renaming option will be there. And as you can see, this is the data wheel and it actually turns just like the real MPC. As you can see, the letters here are cycling through as I turn the data wheel, just like a real MPC. I'll click cancel here hit close. So as you can see, this is a full level button. Everything checks out 16 levels. You see the window pops up here. Next sequence, track mute. You have your pad banks here, A, B, C, and D. Your main volume knob is here. Your record gain is here, which within the plugin, I don't use 
the record function at all. So I'm mainly using this to load my sounds to the pads and launch them and be able to trigger them from this plugin and use some of the functionality from here. So the next thing here, if you look at the numerical keypads, you'll see a big part of using the keypad options on the real MPC is you have to press this shift button here, hold it, and then press the corresponding number that you'd like to go into this particular window or menu. Instead of clicking shift with your mouse, you actually have to click and hold shift on your computer keyboard and then click on the number or the option that you want to open. So I'll hit shift on my computer keyboard. I'm holding it. Then you'll take your mouse and click on program and it will open your program window here. And the same goes for all these options, whether it's trim, you'd hold down shift on your computer keyboard, take your mouse and click on five for trim, mixer, sample window, song window, load, your save window, miscellaneous. And this key here is your VMPC options. So now once you're inside of this VMPC menu window, you wanna go to the F5 key which corresponds to the MIDI tab in the window. And this will open the MIDI option. So this option is great if you have a controller that has 16 pads or a different pad layout from the plugin. This will help you change the note values to line up with the controller that you're using. I'm using an MPK249. Something I noticed on the MPK249 controller, this pad on the controller actually corresponds to this pad in the plugin as default. So I had to go in myself and reconfigure the different note values to line the pads up so that everything is lined up the exact same way as the MPK249 controller is. This note variation slider, it works as well. Everything works to the touch. Play, play start, stop, overdub, record. Even the cursor works the same way. Tap tempo, repeat. So again, I won't be sequencing anything in here, but I will load some sounds in and show you guys how that process works. So I'll take this kick. I'm gonna click and drag it from my all files window on Logic Pro and drag and drop it on to that pad. So. As you can see, every time I touch the pad, it lights up here on the screen. Look for a hat. Click, drag, and drop onto the pad that you want. So now I have this kick, this hat. Let's look for a snare or clap. All right, click, drag and drop. So I'm gonna kick, hat, clap. Take this snare, click, drag and drop. So I'm gonna kick, hi-hat, clap, and a snare. Okay, so a quick note for dragging and dropping sounds onto the pads. You wanna make sure that the files have a .wave extension. So that's very important or else they won't load onto the pads. Okay, so I have my four drum sounds loaded. Kick, hat, clap, and snare. Okay, so once I'm ready to record a sequence, I'm gonna use Logic Pro to record everything. I'm just gonna be triggering my sounds from this VMPC 2000 XL plugin. That's mainly how I use this. So I'm gonna record a kick. Okay, let's play that. As you can see, the pad here is lighting up that the kick is on. Play that back. And there's the snare pad lighting up. Okay, so now I can go to the VMPC plugin, hold down shift on my keyboard and press the six key, which is program. That will take me to the program window. I hit the function one key here for drum one and I will hit the function two key for parameters. Now I can choose on each sound here, and you can see the sound names change as I hit the pad. 
Now this gives you the option just like the real NPC. You can use the cursor to jump. So here you would use the data wheel to change the tune of your hi-hat. Go to the left for negative values, to the right for positive values. Same with the clap. Snare. You can then toggle to the voice overlap mode and I usually use it on mono. I like to keep all my sounds on mono. You can then jump to the filter option frequency. And you can hear the filter engage. The resonance. Go to your envelope. There's the attack. As you can see, it shaves off the transient as I raise the attack value and bring it back down to zero. Bring the transient back. Decay, I can change how long or short I want the sound to go. The next main feature I use here is again, hold down the shift on the computer keyboard and I click on numerical key five for trim. And this window, you will see the waveforms of each individual sound that you have on each pad. So this is the kick. This is your waveform for that kick. This is where you can trim the start and end points by using the data wheel. As you can see, it's moving as I move the wheel. That's the starting point. Then you can take the cursor and navigate over to the ending point and do the same thing and bring your ending point in closer using the data wheel. Just click it, hold it and drag and it will spin in the direction that you're dragging the mouse. Another cool trick that I also use on the NPC that actually still works in this plugin is holding the shift button using this fader to increase the value here a lot faster than using the data wheel because as you can see these are just small little ticks in the value as I turn the wheel. If you'd like to cover a lot more ground here you would just hit shift on your computer keyboard click and drag this fader to the point in the sample that you would like to truncate or edit as you can see. Again, I'm just holding shift on the computer keyboard and I'm clicking and dragging this fader up and down to cover the entire length of the sample. And you can cycle through your other sounds to see the waveforms. That's the waveform for the hi-hat. This is the waveform for the clap. This is your waveform for the snare. And then to go back to your main screen, of course, you just click on this button here for main screen. Okay, so the next feature that I use a lot is the 16 levels. This is one of my favorite features on any MPC. I'm going to take this chord sample here, click, drag it to any pad that I want. I'm gonna just put it on this pad since we have the drums on the lower four. So now, so I'm gonna use this 16 levels feature to map the chord stab chromatically across the pads. What I like to do first is go to shift and go back to this number six key here for program and go back to parameters. I'm gonna jump over to the tune value and I like to detune it a little bit more before I enter the 16 levels feature. I'm gonna turn the data wheel here to the left and tune this synth down before I go into 16 levels mode. About there sounds good. I'm gonna jump back to the main screen, click on main screen. I'm gonna click on 16 levels. Once I'm in 16 levels, I'm gonna press the pad that I want to trigger for 16 levels. That's the synth stab. I'm gonna take the cursor, click down to get to velocity. I'm not gonna use velocity. I'm gonna turn the data wheel to the right. I'm gonna use note variable or note variation. Once I click turn on, this will map that chord stab across all of the pads chromatically. So I'm gonna click right here, F5 
for turn on and here we have see now you won't see the pads light up here once it's in 16 levels mode but i'm triggering this from my mpk 249 keyboard with the pads so So that's the 16 levels feature. It actually works like a real MPC. So if I wanted to use the velocity option within the 16 levels feature, I'll click 16 levels. I'll grab this hi-hat and go down to the parameters and change that back to velocity. I'm gonna click again, F5 for turn on. So once you press turn on, what it's gonna do is it's going to map the velocity from loud to quiet of that same hi-hat mapped all the way across the pads. So again, you're not gonna see it highlight when I press the pads, but you'll hear it as I go down the pads. I'm gonna start with this pad on my controller and go all the way down. You'll hear the velocity get quieter as I reach down to this pad here. So I'm gonna start here and go all the way down. So that's the 16 levels velocity feature. And all of these transport controls do actually work. I just don't use them. Again, I do all of my sequencing and transport controlling using this Logic Pro X DAW and all the features inside there. I just use this to trigger mainly samples from and some of the features like the parameters that I showed you in here. And these banks are also available as well. A, B, C, and D to load 16 pads under each pad bank. So I hope you enjoyed that video. That was the VMPC 2000 XL and how I like to use it. This is one of my favorite plugins to bring back that nostalgia. If I don't have the MPC on me and I just want to use this, this is a mainstay in my templates that I work in. So I love it and I highly recommend it. Definitely check this out. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, comment, and I'll see you in the next one.